Now that you've learned how to create truth tables for longer propositions, it's time for our final lessons, which involve truth tables for arguments. You can take a look at section 6.4, page 344. That's where we'll begin. And we're going to begin with the rules for truth tables. And I'll just show them to you in your textbook. First thing to notice is that we're going to symbolize the arguments using letters to represent entire propositions. Now, you've been using terms, as I mentioned uh, several videos back, but now you're going to do the same thing you did with propositions, but you're using letters to represent those propositions instead of terms. You're going to write out the symbolized argument, and you're going to put a single slash between each one of the premises and a double slash between the last premise and the conclusion. Then you'll draw a truth table for the symbolized argument just as if it was a proposition broken into parts. So you're going to treat each premise and the conclusion as if they were in brackets or in parentheses. Then we're going to do what's called the line test. We're going to look for a line in which all of the premises are true and the conclusion is false. If you find that line, then the argument is invalid. If you do not find that line, it is valid. So I'm just going to show you the example here about juvenile killers and execution and justifiable punishments. We'll work that one first as an example. So the argument is if juvenile killers are as responsible for their crimes as adults, then execution is a justifiable punishment. Juvenile killers are not as responsible for their crimes as adults, Therefore, execution is not a justified punishment or justifiable punishment. So you need to remember your operator, its name, its logical function, and of course, the most important thing now, what it's used to translate. So we're going to take the words in the argument that are not the simple propositions that we're going to represent with letters, and we're going to translate those words with operators. So we're looking for simple propositions and for the operators in these arguments. Looking at this argument, I can immediately see I've got if, then, then I've got a not, and I've got a not here. So that tells me that I'm probably going to have a horseshoe for implication for my if then statement, and I'm probably gonna need some tildes to use for the not. So in between those, I've got juvenile killers are as responsible for their crimes as adults. I'm going to go ahead and use J to represent that. Then execution is a justifiable punishment, E. Then my next statement says juvenile killers are not as responsible for their crimes as adults. So that's a negation of J. Juvenile killers are not as responsible for their crimes as adults, whereas before it said juvenile killers are as responsible for their crimes as adults. So we're going to say this is a negation of J or tilde J. Therefore, it makes it very clear where the conclusion is. Execution is not a justifiable punishment. Again, we've got a negation. Ex execution is a justifiable punishment versus execution is not a justifiable punishment. So we'll make this till the E. So if we do sort of a preliminary look at what standard form would be, it might look like this. If J, then E. Not J therefore not E. And of course, the if-then can be symbolized by a horseshoe. You need not do these interim steps. I'm just showing you how I get from one place to another. So J implies E, not J, not E. There's your standard form. Now, the way that I create a truth table for this argument is just to write this argument out from top to bottom across. So it becomes J implies E, one slash between the first premise and the second premise. The second premise is not J. Then a double slash between all the premises and the conclusion not E. Then I simply set up my truth table exactly the way that I would normally. L equals 2 to the N, 
L equals two to the J E, that's two. So L equals four because there are two different letters. I divide that just as I did with my truth tables for propositions. I divide four in half after first drawing four lines that gave me the number of lines. I divide it in half to get the number of trues and falses under the first letter from the left. So I've got two trues and two falses under J. I divide that in half again and I get one. One true and one false. All of those rules we've already gone over um, when it comes to truth tables for longer propositions. Then I can do the same thing that I would normally do. I just carry over those values. So true, true, false, false under the J, taking care not to write it under the operators. And again, true, false, true, false under the second time that I see the E. Now everything is set up and it looks, it should, or it should look very familiar to you. So I'm gonna do the, or work the tildes first because it seems to make the most sense because they modify only what is exactly after them or they, they affect what's directly after them only. So if something is true, it's gonna make it false. If something is false, it's gonna make it true. So what I want is not E, but not E. So I want false, true, false, true, making it the opposite of E. Now I'm done with my E column, I've got my tilde E, and I can move on. I'm gonna do the same thing with not J. The tilde makes it the opposite. Here, I'll remember that my rule for the horseshoe is that it's only false if it's true, then false, or true on the left and false on the right. There's only one occurrence of that here, it's here, true, false. Here it will be true, 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 and I'm done with these two. So what I'm left with is my conclusion. That's the answer for my conclusion. I also have the answer for the second premise and the answer for this third premise. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what is again called the line test. So I'm looking for one line And by line, just so that it's clear, I mean that this is line one, this is line two, this is line three, and this is line four. So we're going across line one, line two, line three, line four. So I'm looking for one line with all true premises. They have to be all true, not just some of them. and a false conclusion. If, that, if I find that line, the argument is invalid. If I do not find that line, then the argument is valid. So I'm really testing for invalidity, so to speak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take kind of a shortcut. I know that I'm looking for one line with all true premises and a false conclusion, so I don't need to look at lines two and four really at all because I don't have a false conclusion there. So if you end up with an argument with no false answers in the conclusion, then you know that it's a valid argument. It's in fact a tautology, it's all true. But here we've got a false on line one and a false on line three. So I wanna look back on those lines to see if the answers for my premises are also both true. Here they're not. My answer for my first premise is true here and my answer for my second premise is false here. So even though I have a false conclusion, this one's okay. It passes the line test. There, it's not a line where they're both true and the conclusion is false. Again, here on line two, we have a true conclusion, so we skip it. Line three has a false conclusion. And if I look back, the answer for my second premise is true. 
and the answer for my first premise is true. So here we've got a line where there's a false premise and all true, I mean, a false conclusion and all true premises. So here is where this argument fails the line test. So in my answer, I would say invalid fails, meaning failing the line test, on line three. And that's an important part of your answer. Please don't leave that out on an examination or on any kind of homework because it's important that I know which line you're pointing to, that you've actually identified a line as the line on which it fails. So that is the first example as to how to do the translation of and to create a truth table to determine validity for an argument.